Hey, what's up, everybody? We are going to be live in just a second. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We have a great show lined up for you tonight. Uh, producer daughter reminded me yesterday when I signed off, I didn't say love you guys. So I'm sorry. I love you guys. Uh, so I wanted to get started with that. But do me a favor. Let's make the algorithms happy. Let's get some reactions. Let's get some comments. Let's get some shares. We'll be live in just a second. I'll see you. Yo, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us. This is another episode of Stories We Tell Ourselves. I'm your host, Tony R. Sanders. Thank you guys so much for tuning in on the replay and watching this live. This show is all about mastering your internal dialogue. Well, some of you may say, like, what does that mean? What is my internal dialogue? It's the stories we tell ourselves, right? It's that little voice in your head that uh, helps you make decisions. It tells you when you're safe, when you're not safe, where you should go, where you shouldn't go, right? So this show, we want to get through some of those barriers that may be holding you back from success. Think about this just for a second. Anything and everything that will make you successful is on the other side of a thought that you may have. And if we can help you break through that thought to guide you in the right direction, to push you in the right direction, to start on your path of success, that's what we want to do. And that's what we're here for. We're here five nights a week. Count them. One, two, three, four, five nights a week, Monday through Friday, every single week coming to bring you value to help you get over those mental hurdles. So I appreciate you guys being here tonight. Uh, I'm here. So we're going to have a good show. Producer's daughter is here as well. We're going to have a good show. She is all over there producing and stuff with her bonded on behind the camera. Our guest is here as well. So that's going to be amazing. Super excited to talk to this guest. He's already given me some value even just backstage. I bought a book based on his recommendations. Uh, it took me like 30 seconds to download it. So I'm already excited to talk to him. But before we do that, I uh, just want to say thank you guys yesterday for yesterday's show with uh, Leo. Leo was great. He came on. He talked to us about how we can utilize these great moments and pop culture and trending topics to create content on the back of that to grow our personal brand, our business, our business brand. Uh, same way he did with Oreo and the infamous or famous blackout tweet. You can still dunk in the dark. So thank you guys so much for being here for that episode yesterday. And uh, if you didn't catch that episode, you can go back and watch the replay. Also, for you guys being here today, as a simple price of admission, we're going to give you a lot of value today. I can promise and guarantee you that. We're going to be talking about how to grow uh, on LinkedIn and the stories we tell ourselves about LinkedIn. It's a really important conversation. Here's the price of admission. You can do a couple of things. Number one, we got to make the algorithms happy, right? Here's how we do that. We can tap on the reactions button. You see those little likes, the thumbs up, the hearts, the care. I like the little care dude. He's like hugging the heart. He's like, oh, I care. I care about you. <laughs> you guys could do the same thing with this stream. Like, oh, Tony, I care. This is great information, right? That's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is comment on the screen. One thing that we like to do in this broadcast is when you when you learn something new, when you have that aha moment, or around here we call them the light bulb moments. When you have the light bulb moments, go to your phone and hit the light bulb emojis right? Put them in the chat so that we know that you see us, you hear us, and you're understanding and learning the information that me and my guests are putting down, right? That's one thing you could do. Another thing you could do is you can share this broadcast with your friends. We want to share this out to as many people as possible. Now, yesterday, people had questions about sharing. So let's talk about sharing based on your platform. If you're on Facebook, there's a little button right at the bottom. You can click share and share it to 
a group that you're in, that's really good. As a matter of fact, I may do that myself. You can also share it with uh, your timeline. You can share it uh, to through Messenger. There's a couple of different ways you can share it, right? So that's on Facebook. If you're watching this on Periscope or Twitter, you can do two things. You can retweet this, which I would really appreciate the retweets. And in addition to that, you can invite your followers if you're watching this on Periscope. Now, let's say you're watching this on YouTube. On YouTube, you can copy the link, send it to your group chat, send it to your Facebook, send it to your Twitter, all the above. Same thing with Twitch. If you're watching this on Twitch, first of all, I love you. Thank you for watching this on Twitch. Second of all, you can share it the same way you can on any other platform. If you have the ability to share a link, you can share it. And so, producer daughter, we need a share goal for tonight. How many shares should we aim for? Last night, we, we got 11. Producer daughter says five. That five is not ambitious enough for me. We're going to go for 10 again. So I need 10 people to share this broadcast out to make sure this information gets out to as many people as possible. Now, with that being said, I want to bring on our guest for the evening. He is so excited to talk to you, and I'm excited to talk to him. So it's going to make a great pairing. This guy, I found him on Twitter. He was uh, tweeting in this uh, wonderful community of creators that I found on Twitter over the last six months. And I'm watching his content, I'm reading his stuff, and he's doing a really great job, right? And then something happened. Somehow I ran across him uh, talking about a LinkedIn course that he was going to do. And I wanted to be a part of it because no matter how much you know about something or how much you think you know, there's always a little more that can be learned, right? I remember reading a story about Denzel Washington, how he's always taking acting classes because if he goes there and he spends an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours in his acting class, if he leaves one thing with one thing that helps him deliver a line a little better or it helps him you know, uh, fix his face a certain way to really drive home the emotion of a character or a role, it was worth his time, right? Now, I'm not saying I'm the Denzel Washington of LinkedIn. I'm not. I look good, though. But I'm not the Denzel Washington of LinkedIn. But what I am saying, producer daughter says I kind of look good. That's a great compliment coming from your daughter. But what I can say is, uh, you know, I've used LinkedIn to grow my business, to grow my personal brand. I've gotten clients off of LinkedIn. We still get business on LinkedIn. But that doesn't mean that I know everything there is to know about LinkedIn. So I signed up for this guy's course, paid my money, jumped in the course. And it was just a 101 course. It was like going over the basics. I'm like, OK, maybe I'll get something. Maybe I won't. It was jam packed with quality information. As a matter of fact, as soon as I read it, I went back and started to update my profile to make sure I was optimized for everything that I needed to be optimized for on my profile. And there's still some things I need to work out, but he gave me a lot of value and a lot of information. And he's here to do the exact same. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get some light bulbs in the chat for our guest tonight, Mr. David Riggs. How are you, sir? What's up, man? How are you? I'm great, man. I'm super happy to have you here. You're looking good. The The beard is looking nice. The hair is looking nice. Everything looks good. It's the, it's the quarantine beard. I am uh, yeah. too lazy to shave it. I don't need to. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no need to. it. I can, can brush it down. It'll look decent, you know, on a live chat. And that's about it. But uh, <laughs> the hair, the hair is a different story. I uh, stopped cutting it in November and I don't know why. I basically <laughs> was just like, I'm not going to cut my hair again. So I mean you're you're looking at like six month long hair and it's just we're gonna we're gonna let it go. We're gonna see what happens. It looks great. I tell you, if I let my hair grow for six months without cutting it, I look like George Jefferson. I look really bad. Like I look like I had a reverse mohawk on my head. So I we, we won't we won't I do got, that. I used to have long hair. I used to have it like down to here. Really? Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to go back and hunt on my Instagram. I'm it's have like to check it out. back when I was playing <laughs> soccer, like we're talking long, long. I had no idea why I grew it out that long back in the day, but I did. So That's so funny. Well, man, I'm so happy to have you here. Before we get into the content about LinkedIn, I just want you to give an introduction of yourself. So tell the people who you are and what you do. Yeah. All right. Cool. So my name is David Riggs. I am uh, 22 years old. I actually just recently graduated college about a week and a half ago, I guess a week from last Sunday. So, so kind of fresh off the uh, the college experience right now. But um, sometime around my sophomore year, I started a social media management agency and did not go well. Um, I was new to business, had no real idea what I was doing, didn't understand how to land clients or you know generate demand or generate leads for the business. Uh, so took a little bit of a step back about a year and a half ago. Um, decided I was going to do some stuff differently and change the actual business model and move over to websites. 
Uh, and in that year and a half span, we've probably built around 20 to 25 websites. Uh, we focus mainly on personal brand driven businesses, which really comes down to, you know, you don't buy from a company logo, you buy from people. Like you, Nike may be an, an example to where, you know, okay, sure, you're buying from Nike, but almost every other person that you buy from day in and day out, you're buying from the person behind the company brand or behind the company logo. So one of our goals is to really, you know, build a website, help you make better first impressions and really, you know, crush those first seven seconds that someone lands on your website. Uh, and then really just help you build a business with the website, learn the ins and outs of it and how a website can actually support you and help you meet your goals. But uh, outside of that, I am an avid LinkedIn user. That is my my go-to community place. Um, I played college soccer for four years. I'm out of shape right now. Don't judge me. <laughs> I, and I, man, I used to sell shoes like crazy in high school. That was my first side hustle. I had like 40 wow. something pairs at one point. I tried to wear a different pair of shoes every single day for an entire month or for two entire months. And I was close. I was really close. That's really cool, man. First of all, let's get some light bulbs in the chat for your college graduation. That's a big deal. I did not know that. So kudos yeah. to you, man. I know it's not the traditional graduation cap and gown situation that you'd probably prefer to have, but kudos to you for that. Secondly, I love hearing about people's uh, high school like side hustles because I feel like that's so important to like get your business foundation. Like for me in middle school, high school, I was selling candy. My mom took me all the way to the south side to a place called Dinner Bell. I I'd grab you know candy in bulk and then I'd go home and break it up into little baggies and say, okay, I could sell this much for this I much. Love- and then, you know, so I love hearing about the side hustle. So thank you for sharing that. Here's what I got to know though, David, you're 22. Why is LinkedIn your place of, of, of community, right? So like you, you, you're, you grew up with social media in the social media age. You got Twitter, you got Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you got Twitch, you got all these places at 22 years old or a little bit younger, actually. What made you choose LinkedIn as the place where you're going to kind of plant your flag and say, this is where I'm going to build my community? Yeah, honestly, I think the more I think back about it, um, I was excited to do something different. But I think in the moment, the real reason to be super transparent is I didn't want to post on other platforms. Like I was afraid to start posting not necessarily motivational content, but like, you know, your educational content or even just documenting like what I'm doing, like what it's like playing college soccer. Like I just didn't want to create content on either Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, mostly because I had kind of a fear that people would judge me to be truthful. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I think everyone runs into that and applaud to the people who, you know, tackled Instagram in front of all their friends and family and actually did something with it or Twitter or something else. But you know, I took a step back and was like, at all these platforms, you know, I'm interested in business. I may want to be an entrepreneur at this point. I was like 18 or 19. I was like, you know, I may want to do something on my own. I kind of just want to start talking and posting and documenting. I'm going to go to LinkedIn because for one, you know, I know no other high school or college kid is going to scroll LinkedIn at night because that's not the cool thing to do. Uh, And two, I was just like, you know, it's different. It's a different skill. Um, I was on there a couple of times and always liked the way people wrote. So I was like, you know, I'm going to challenge myself to get on there and actually produce some content as well. I love it, man. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. You know, what's interesting too, and we can talk about this, but people always phrase LinkedIn or kind of frame them in, box them in as, you know, I go on there when, if I'm a recruiter, I'm on there all day. Shout out to all my recruiting friends that are watching this. I know you guys are on there all day, but number two, they say like, I go on there if I look for a job. Right. And so my first question, I guess is, is LinkedIn just for job searching and job hunting or has it evolved to become more than that? Yeah, no, I definitely think it's evolved to be so much more than that. And you know, LinkedIn will always be at its core job and employment focused, whether it's side hustle job or like full-time gig, you're looking at changing careers, changing location. I think that will always be like a building block of what LinkedIn is. But since then, it's kind of like sprouted out like a tree does, like the trunk is going to be based in employment and jobs and, you know, helping people find new revenue streams. But take a step back and you actually look at the bigger tree, like you got content, live stream, photo, video, uh, PDFs, carousels, you got networking going in on messaging. You can send connection requests at mass now and connect with whoever you want to do. I, I really think it's for me, it's kind of my sandbox for ideas. So, you know, I'll consistently post there, try and generate some demand for my business, generate some leads for my business as well. Um, but, you know, I'll throw content on there that's testing. Like I'm testing out a new idea, a new product. Um, a really good story of that is like 
everyone on there is very business entrepreneurial just they they want to they want to help there's a good community there but they're very business driven so a really good example is like you know i hopped on there i was developing an app about two months ago it's still kind of in the works um and i was like hey i want people to beta test this app just drop a comment below if you want and i had like 300 people asked to you know beta test the app which is crazy um so i think in it i just found a really good community i've stuck there but you know whenever people talk about it, like stories we tell ourselves about linkedin is you know it's just a job searching platform if i don't need a job like I'm not going to stick on there or I'm not going to log on to LinkedIn. And I think that's the worst thing you can do because the best time for you to be on LinkedIn is when you still have a job because none of us are going to know if we're going to get laid off or fired or if the market collapses and we're not going to have employment the next week. We want to already have that brand pre-built and ready to go that as soon as something happens, we can lean on that brand to find the next spot. Boom. You just nailed that. You're 100% right. People do run to LinkedIn when it's time to find a job, but you allocated the, the problem perfectly. If I already don't know you, if you aren't already building a brand, if you don't already have a presence, then when you run into the community, to the ecosystem, and you just want to take, 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 people feel that. And that yeah. doesn't present you in a very good light, right? So I had this video the other day that I posted on LinkedIn, and I said, hey, everyone i mean everyone should have some type of content series and people are like i don't need a content series i'm not an entertainer or whatever it's not about being an entertainer right it's about building up that brand putting your skills on display showing people what you can do so in the event that you need to go in for the ask six months down the road a year down the road whatever the case may be then people uh they trust you with it, right? And you're an easy yes now. You're easy. You're a safe yes is a better way of saying that because people know, okay, yeah, I've been watching this guy do this thing for six months. So I know 100% with certainty he has the ability to get this job done because I follow him on LinkedIn. I'm connected with him there. And he does a lot there to show me that he has the skill set. Also, you just kind of ran through a couple of the things that LinkedIn itself as a platform has done to make it more like other social media platforms. That's one thing that I love about your course and I won't give too much away, but you're like, LinkedIn's not like Instagram yet, but it's, it's getting there right now. You can do video, yeah. you can do carousel posts. There's a lot of similarities there. You can, for some accounts, you can go LinkedIn live. I don't have it yet. Come on, LinkedIn. I need to get it on a beta for LinkedIn live. We'd be live on LinkedIn right now, but you know, there are a lot of things that they're doing to work on, making it more of a social media platform. So thank you for sharing that information. Let me do a couple of things real quick just to kind of reset this live stream. If you guys are just tuning in and you're wondering what is this crazy show? Well, this is show is called Stories We Tell Ourselves. I'm hosting uh, this show live on Periscope, Twitch, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all those, those all those places. And this show is also about helping you master your internal dialogue. I want to help break through some of the mental barriers that you uh, may have in your mind that are making you overlook some of the opportunities that may be right in front of you, like LinkedIn. And that's what David is here to talk to us about. The guy over here, David Riggs, he's here to talk to us about the stories he tells us about LinkedIn, how we're missing this tremendous opportunity to grow our business and grow our brand. I want to thank you for all the people who are sharing. I saw Michelle share this. Uh, Camille Hollis shared this. Chris is here. Randall is here. Tonisha is here. She shared it as well. Uh, got a couple of retweets on Twitter. James Despin, thank you so much for retweeting this on Twitter. Uh, Jason Bonner, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Okay, back to you, David. Sir, here's the question that I have about LinkedIn. When it comes to LinkedIn, like we, we have an audience of people who aren't on it at all because they feel like, you know, it's just a job. I feel like we already address those people. But what about the people who are on it and using it every day? What are some things that they're probably overlooking uh, when it comes to LinkedIn? Yeah. Um, so I think the first one, you're probably not posting either enough content or you're not posting the right content. Um, mm. You know, I'm sure there, ex ex there are exceptions. If you, if Jason Vanna is still on here, Jason is a, a pretty darn good exception of that role because his content's killer. But, you know, for most people, even me six months ago, when I was still getting a grip on like, what is LinkedIn and what is my content strategy going to look like? I had to get really, really specific and think with the end in mind. Um, so, you know, I mean, LinkedIn, you can do a lot of stuff just like Instagram, Twitter, and really any platform. But I always try and do things that are purposeful, especially on LinkedIn. I try and define a goal and work backwards. 
Um, so I think a really good applicable tactical step for, you know, any creator out there is going to be defining a goal before you actually post um, and making sure that goal aligns with your business. So really, you know, clean, easy example of this is going to be growing an email newsletter. Um, every single post that I have, almost every single one, um, I'll make a post. The first comment um, inspired by Jason actually will be, hey, if you like this, if you like this post, go click this link, subscribe to my newsletter, and I'm going to give you even more content like this to your email biweekly. And it's basically a quick overview, a quick call to action to push people there. But you know, it fits my brand and my business because I want to edu educate people on LinkedIn. I want to, or LinkedIn and also on email. I want to grow that email list and potentially, you know, eventually use that as another revenue driver for my business. Um, so I think, you know, starting off, the one thing that you can really focus on, if you're on LinkedIn, you're creating content or, you, you know, you're kind of poking around learning the platform, I would recommend, you know, sit down and then drop what you know about creating content and think with the end in mind. Pick a, pick a goal that you want to do. Maybe, you know, Tony, for you, get more live stream views. Like, mm -hmm. let's work backwards. Think with the end in mind. All right, we want more views. What is going to be a good argument to actually get people to view it? If you want people to buy your product or visit your website, you know, it all starts from defining the goal and working backwards. Right. Here's a question I have about that. How much, you, you know, we want to put out content. How, how do we know how much content for LinkedIn is too much content, right? LinkedIn yeah. seems to have a very long tail when it comes to content. And I get things in my feed like, oh, so-and-so posted this five days ago. Five days ago, why am I just now seeing it? So how much content on a daily, weekly, monthly basis is too much content for LinkedIn? Yep. I think uh, you think about it in a range like this, right? Uh, and I guess, yeah, this screen. So, you know, if we're starting here, this would be like the bare minimum. I would recommend posting once a week um, because like you said, it's pretty long tail. You can have posts that show up in your feed from five days ago, sometimes even like a week ago, two weeks ago, I've seen. So content sticks around. So if you're new to the platform, you're kind of testing it out. You know, LinkedIn's still different and maybe I haven't fully convinced you yet to go all in. <laughs> no, I think one one post a week is going to be awesome. And I would use that post um, to show off what you've been learning and what you're really like, how you're educating yourself. So something I always recommend to either friends in college or friends in high school as well is like, look, all I want you to do, don't even like freak out about it. I want you to open up LinkedIn every Saturday morning and I want you to sit down and for 15 minutes, I just want you to write a post out, let it come natural and just share stuff that you've learned the past week and hit post. You know, if you're starting off, that's your first, second or third post you're not going to get a lot of love, right? You're going to get one like, two like, maybe three likes. But it's the process of, you know, in four years, whenever you go apply for a job at, you know, a bigger company, let's say you go apply for a job at Nike and you are a high school basketball player and you've been tweeting about basketball practices and what you've learned from them for the past six years, that's going to stand out to a Nike recruiter. It's going to show, you know, it fits their brand. It fits what they're interested in. It shows that you're an athlete and it shows that, you know, not only do you get it, you've been investing in yourself for a long, long time. Right. Um, Switching to the other side, that's the bare minimum, right? That's the strategy I would go with. If we're kind of looking at it from what is like on the edge of too much, I'd say I normally stick with a post a day. Um, some people will tell you you can get up to two posts a day. I think my quality drops off after a post a day. I can only create about, you know, five to six posts a week. I normally take Saturday and or Sunday off from LinkedIn. I normally don't even log on just because it's free time that I can do something else. But for that Monday through Friday, that weekday, I recommend trying to get a post out a day. Um, you want to get real tactical with it. Aim for like 8 a.m. or 4 p.m. Um, but the strategy I'd go with that is, you know, every single week, like weeks are going to happen at the same time, same day, every month. Like it's a repetitive thing. Every weekend or, you know, at the beginning of the month, define what those themes are going to look like for each week. So let's say, you know, we're starting June soon. First week of June, I'm going to talk about websites Second week of June, I'm going to talk about copywriting. Third week of June, I'm going to talk about uh, photography. And then fourth week of June, I'm going to talk about LinkedIn, the capital op. So that's another way you can do it. Like if you're really looking to scale up that content, um, try and theme your weeks and work off of that theme. Um, right. It's something that a few other LinkedIn creators do. I've kind of tweaked it to fit my own thing, but that's a super long answer. The very short one, if you're getting on LinkedIn now and you're kind of wondering what the best practices are, Aim for either a post a week or, you know, five to six posts a week. I love it. And another thing that I would add to that to just encourage people, um, you can always increase the amount of, of content that you're posting or 
decrease it, right? If you feel like you're doing too much, like there's been days where I've posted like four times on LinkedIn and it just felt like, it felt like to me that it was overkill. Like I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm like all the way going in a hundred percent. As a matter of fact, someone saw me out at a, a conference before this whole thing was shut down. And she says, well, if it isn't the inescapable Tony Sanders, and I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, every time I open up LinkedIn, you're there. I'm getting notifications <laughs> that your post is trending. Your friend Tony's post is trending in this hashtag and da 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 So, you know, I do think that you can uh, maybe step on the gas a little too much, but fill it out. You know, but I, I love that at least one post per week. For me, that would drive me crazy. I'm a high volume content mm -hmm. producer. This show that we're doing right now is going to be five different cuts that I could put out on LinkedIn. So there's a week's worth of content already, not to mention the other show that I do. So uh, I definitely understand that. But I do think that people uh, shouldn't be afraid to get locked into a certain thing. You know, if you start at once a week and then you want to slowly scale it up to once a day, I think that that's yeah. okay. Uh, but just make sure that you are consistent. And I love the tactical bit about posting at the right times because people do start their shift, look at LinkedIn and they go about their day and maybe towards the end of their shift, they'll look at it again. So I like yeah. those additions. Um, yeah. And then I kind of want to, I'll even, you know, touch back on a point that you talked about, which is more tactical strategy, right? On LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of people worry whenever you start posting on LinkedIn about likes and comments. I think we all do. It's kind of a dopamine rush. We enjoy it. I don't think there's anything bad at admitting it. I like when people like and comment on my posts, but what I'm really concerned about is starting the right conversations. And I think the example that you gave, it's like someone was out in like the ines inescapable Tony Sanders, like, you know, out here, he's always on my feet. I love that, you know, for a couple of reasons, but I think the main reason is Whenever we're diving into LinkedIn, I think we focus on the people that are viewing our content, which is fine. But I think the, the key of it is that there's a lot of lurkers in the background. There's people that never like your posts, never comment on your posts, never share your posts. But then out of nowhere, one day you're going to get a DM from them. They're going to be like, hey, I've been following you for six months. I love your content. I am 100% ready to buy your service. And I know that seems a bit exaggerative. But I kid you not, it happened two days ago for me. It's someone that had never liked, never commented, never shared on any of my posts, just dropped in and was like, I love this content. This one pushed me over the top. I'm ready to get started. So I think that's a really good thing to keep in mind is like, you never know who's watching on LinkedIn. There's a lot of people on the platform. There's a lot of people that are active, but there's a lot of people that are, you know, kind of like a fake active. They log on, but they don't really engage with posts. Those are the ones that nine times out of 10 are going to be your business drivers. Um, you know, likes don't build a business, revenue builds a business. And the people that are kind of hiding behind the scenes are the ones that are really paying attention to what you're putting out. So that's why I'd encourage you, like if you're getting on and you're getting no traction, forget about it because it's going to speak to someone else who's also not, you know, engaging on posts. That's not their style. They just kind of keep like a, a bird's eye view of everything. And when they find somebody that they like, they go all in on them. You know what? That resonates with me as the immediate truth, because over the last six months, We've gotten two clients from LinkedIn, uh, and these are like we're providing monthly services on a recurring basis for them. Neither one of them initially liked my any of my posts, commented, shared. Actually, to this day, they still haven't, but they DM'd me and said, hey, I love what you're doing. If we could take that and apply it to my business in some way, shape, or form, that would be extremely valuable to us. And I'm like, all right, let's see how valuable it is, right? So <laughs> then I go in and we do a deal. Another thing that's happened is, I have had someone comment on my post and then say, hey, uh, such and such, share this with me. Now, they didn't share it on LinkedIn, but they made a, a you know, copy the link to it, yep. text it to them, emailed it to them. You know, hey, I'm over here because so and so who on LinkedIn, who, by the way, still never comments on any of my content, but she's she's sharing it with people. Right. So it's an amazing thing. And there's a lot going on that you can't see. Uh, than what you can see. And I have a theory about that. I think that people on LinkedIn may not comment or share as much sometimes as other platforms because a share or a comment or a link, a like on a, a post on LinkedIn, it's almost like uh, you're publishing a post, right? Because mm -hmm. almost everyone in your network can see like, oh, David Riggs likes this post. Yeah. Well, let me go see what David Riggs liked. And if it's not exactly 100% on brand or on message with what you're currently doing, some people won't like it, but that doesn't yeah. mean that they don't see it. That doesn't mean that it didn't have an impact for them. So I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, here's my final question for you. 
I get on LinkedIn, right? Let's say I'm watching this interview. I'm, I'm eating this up. I'm blocking out the stories. I tell myself about LinkedIn. I'm going to put those stories aside. I'm listening to the stories that Dave and Tony are telling. I'm going to jump on here. So I start posting content. I'm doing my one post a day. Everything is happening, but I'm not getting any followers. And I look at Dave account and he has over 15,000 active followers on his LinkedIn. Why is it this working for me? So how could I start to build an audience on LinkedIn if I'm starting from scratch, if I'm starting from, you know, zero or very close to zero connections? Yeah. Um, work smart or work smart, not hard would be my advice. So I guess I'll jump platforms. I'll use Twitter as a really good example because I've kind of been investing some time there learning about it, but you know, that's a platform to where I'm, I'm vice versa. Like I got like maybe a thousand followers and I'm looking at people that got hundreds of thousands and they're killing it. Right. What I started doing was I would go to their accounts every day. I would just leave a comment on like every single one of their posts that they put out that day. And what I found is that my profile would get more visibility from those comments than they would my own posts, mm -hmm. which kind of put a light bulb in my head also that that's the same thing that I did on LinkedIn two years ago. Um, you know, I was publishing, publishing, publishing crickets. I heard nothing. And I was like, okay, what's the quickest way, not necessarily in like a growth hack way, but like, how can I do this better? How can I be smarter with this? If I'm spending an hour a day on LinkedIn posting, what could I, you know, maybe spend 15 minutes a day posting, put out a lesser quality post for the time being, but really work to grow that audience and get some feedback. I would recommend going on LinkedIn. Um, you know, if you want to see the people that I try to engage with daily, shoot me a message after this and I'll, I'll give you a good list of creators to follow. I'd literally go on and what I would do, let's say, Tony, you just posted on LinkedIn and I'm, I'm a new creator. You've got 100,000 followers, right? I'm going to go on there. I'm going to leave my own comment. I'm going to leave my two cents about what's going on with like, how, how does this resonate with me? What are my two cents? What are my thoughts on your post? And this is where people don't follow through all the way, but it's really important. Then you start scrolling the comments and literally start three or four or five or six or 10 or 20, however many you want, how many comments are there conversations with other people. So like I, I leave a comment on your post, Tony, and then I'm going through and I see people um, like Jason and Ned and Luke and a bunch of other people on there that I'm like, Oh, you know, he had a good comment too. I'm just going to, you know, leave my thoughts on his. I'm going to start a conversation with him as well. And what you'll do, honestly, pretty quickly, give it a month and you'll see some big results. Um, you'll start driving people to your profile because you're showing up in the right spots. Right. Um, a really good analogy of this is like moving to a neighborhood, throwing a block party, inviting no one and being upset that no one came to your party. doesn't work like that. If you want to be known and get your name out there, you got to build off of other people's networks and other people's parties. Well said. I love that. And the only metric that matters is the, the conversations that you start. Right. And I always tell people, if you want to build an engaged audience where you're having these dialogues, you can do two things. You can create content and distribute it so well that it generates a conversation. That's really, really, really hard to do. The other thing you can do is join conversations already in progress add yeah. your two cents, add your value into it. And then that'll set you up long term to be able to then start your own conversations around your content. So thank you so uh -huh. much for sharing that, man. Um, I, I mentioned the LinkedIn course a couple of times. I don't even know if I was a part of a beta or if it's available for everyone, but it was really yeah. helpful to me. I know that was 101. I know that you have 201 out as well. Is there a place where we can drive people to if they want to work on this, if they want to get better, they want to see how you're doing it and how to get it done? Is there a place they can go for that? Yeah. So I'll give you two easy ways to do it or three easy ways to do it even. Uh, LinkedIn would be an easy way to start. If you go to my profile and go down to my featured section, you're going to see two thumbnails that it's going to just show LinkedIn 101 and LinkedIn 201. Those should be direct links to uh, Gumroad where I have the products listed. Um, another way that you can hop on my website at davidwilliamriggs.com. Scroll down. I have a button that says courses. You can click on that and go check them out that way. Uh, and then I guess the last way, if you want to log on to Gumroad and search my name, David W. Riggs, you'll be able to find them there as well. Perfect, man. Dave, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, this is the part of the show where I tell producer daughter to take me off the screen. I only leave David on the screen. And David, this becomes your audience now. So everybody watching live, everybody watching this on the replay, you get to tell them whatever you want to tell them. If you want to tell them that you hate my beard, you can tell them that. I don't recommend it because they love me. But if you want to tell them uh, anything else, any 
final words, parting wisdom about LinkedIn, where they can follow you, connect with you, all those things. This is the time to do that. So, producer, daughter, take me off the screen. David, the audience is yours. All right, let's make it happen. I'm trying to think. Um, the first thing I will say is that if you are you know, a social media connoisseur like me, then you will probably want to either come follow, engage with me on other platforms. Um, I am most active on LinkedIn and Twitter. And right now I'm super into growing an email newsletter, which I have no idea how to do. It's going pretty well. We're, we're encroaching on about 175 subscribers. Um, post it bi-weekly. It's a, it's a pretty cool, unique format. If you're familiar with James Clear, it's a two by two format. Um, so I ask you, I ask you basically two questions in the email to prompt you to think about uh, a different way that you can strategize or really grow your business or grow your LinkedIn or grow your social media. And then I also give you two people to follow it on social media that are really good examples of more or less doing what I'm talking about as well in that newsletter. So if you want to do that, you got to go to davidwilliamriggs.com backslash subscribe. You'll be able to find a newsletter there. Um, the, the one thing that I would leave, you know, I didn't touch on it a ton in this, but it's something that I think about daily. It's something that is really important, I think, for everyone to think about is consistency. Um, I honestly hope that if I'm known for anything when I die, it's going to be the value of consistency. And I'm going to be known as a dude that was super consistent. And I know that sounds a little crazy that, you know, that's the one thing I want to be known for. But, you know, there's business, there's entrepreneurship, there's marketing, there's sales, there's VC, private equity. There are so many different things you can be really good at, but all of those are job titles. None of those are going to, you know, stick with me forever, but a characteristic like, you know, consistency will. And I, I think, you know, I started this kind of weird entrepreneurial content journey when I was 18 or 19 years old, right? Um, and I quickly learned that consistency matters. It's going to feel like you are hammering away at the same wall with no results for the first month, two months, three months, or four months. But what you're going to do is, you know, you'll slowly see this curve that goes up. And then at some point, there's going to be a breaking point and it's going to shoot through the roof. Um, so my challenge to you is pick one thing, do it for a month and see what happens, right? And it seems simple, but I'd really challenge you whether you want to get better at push-ups, you want to be a better runner, um, whatever it may be, I challenge you to just pick it, do it for a month and see what happens. And uh, a cool story about that, in January, I challenged myself to run 75 miles in a month. And to give you backstory, I was a college soccer player, but I had not laced up running shoes in probably two months and ran outside. I was completely out of shape. So my first run was like two miles at a 19 minute pace. I was dying. Uh, at the very end of that month, I was back to running about five miles in 40 minutes. So to give you an idea, you know, consistency matters. I wouldn't have gotten that if I wouldn't have run six days a week um, for an entire month and seen those results. So if I could leave you with one thing, it would be consistency, whether it's on social media, whether it is building a business, working out, whatever it may be, it's going to seem like you are super boring. It's going to seem like things are not going well. You're hitting the same wall over and over and over and over and over and seeing no results. But I promise you, there's going to be one day where everything just breaks through. Uh, and, you know, I'm not even sure if I've made it there, but I, I feel like I'm starting to see those upticks, whether it's in LinkedIn or business, or even personal development. So that's my one thing. It's away from LinkedIn. It's, it's different from business websites. That's my personal development tip. I love it. Well here. said. That's, yeah. my, that's my mantra. <laughs> Consistency matters. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And uh, I would add to that patience as well. Like, you know, so many people, I encourage everybody to put out a content series. They do 10 episodes. I'm like, this isn't working. No one's watching. And I'm like, look, you've done 10 episodes. Like, just relax. Okay. Relax. We're going to yeah. get there. We're going to build it up. So David, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Go check David out on LinkedIn. I'm following him. I'm connected with him there. I'll definitely be jumping in his comments, saying what's up to a few people, adding in the value that I can. Looking forward to uh, LinkedIn 201. 101 was amazing. I learned a lot there. I'm sure 201 will be just the same. So I appreciate you being here. For the rest of you guys, thank you so much. Um, I know I've seen a couple people share and retweet this. Uh, so I appreciate you for doing that. I always appreciate you guys engaging, tapping in, making sure you share this. Replay viewers matter too. So if you're watching this on the replay, say what's up. I'll make sure that I'll jump in the comments and say hello back to you. You guys know how I do it by now. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back again. Can you believe it's already Thursday? It's a short week. I feel like it's only Tuesday, but it's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. Uh, so we'll be back. And I think we're going to be in the kitchen tomorrow. If you've ever seen this show, it's called, uh, what's the show? Oh, it's called Chopped. 
sure you've seen that show, right? Well, we're going to have a top champion on the show. We're going to try to do another 30 minute meal. And I'm going to try to not to fully embarrass myself by cooking on camera again. But you know what? Some of you guys told me you liked the cooking episode last week. We're switching it up a little bit. I do think it's something that helps people uh, create and express themselves in different ways to help overcome the mental blocks. As a matter of fact, David and I were just talking about video games, which we're both uh, hopefully about to go play in a few minutes here. So uh, it's a great way to just express yourself creatively and get the juices flowing. So we're going to cook tomorrow. I don't know what we're cooking. I'm going to try to be prepared. But uh see you guys back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Until next time, you guys be safe. Take care of yourself. I love you guys. Peace. <laughs>